All right, guys, welcome back to another Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. It is Monday, January 17th. Golly, we're almost through January. This is happening fast. Lots of things happening. I'm just going to jump right into it. We've got a guest that comes on often. We are glad to have her. She is rocking and rolling all over town. Sometimes literally keeping us going with some good music and stuff. Um, this is Miss Michelle Hall, guys, with the Victoria or Symphony Orchestra. Did I say that mm -hmm. correctly? Um, we were really excited for this upcoming concert. Well, I won't ruin it. Let's just let you talk about it. This is your game. Right. Uh, this next Saturday on the 22nd, we were scheduled to have Jose Feliciano play with the Symphony Orchestra, and we were really excited. It was almost sold out. And then we got a call yesterday morning saying that three members of their team tested positive for COVID. Good Lord, and here we go. so <laughs> that they're not going to travel next week. So uh, we immediately worked on the calendar when we could have them return or reschedule. And so we have that date. It's now March 26th. And so um, tickets are available online again. The people who had tickets to the event, and there were over a thousand. So wow. all of those people, the tickets that say January 22nd will still be good for the new date of March 26th. Do they have to do anything? They don't have to Not do a thing. thing. No. Nope. Automatically transfers Automatically over. transfers over. If they have any concerns, they can call us like if they can't make the new date, mm -hmm. then we'll work with them with their tickets. But otherwise they don't have to do anything. And then we had several people say, hey, this is even better. I can now go. Right. Are there tickets available? And so the website is now live again and they can buy tickets online. That's what I was going to ask is if it transfers those existing you know the previous ones that didn't if those are still there but new people can go on yes. and buy the remaining seats yes and the people that are not able to attend now some seats have opened up ah. so the floor had been completely sold in a lot of the front rows in the mezzanine and so if you'll if you keep checking back there's pockets of seats that are opening up I like and it. they're going to go fast where where did you put me with my vip seats they oh you uh, know. well, that's a, well uh, <laughs> no. actually I, I do want to take my wife to, to one of these though she it's about time for us to get out of the house and <laughs> she uh, she likes all this stuff and, and so do I. And so um, I wanted to ask you a little bit since this fell through. So we got it rescheduled March 26th. Everything is transferable. You don't have to do anything if you already have tickets. If you don't, you can get on now and buy new ones. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the process. You know, I caught a little bit of Wayden Carter the other day where you were talking about kind of the what all goes to it? I think y'all were talking about, uh, what is it, set list? Or, or not set list, but the requests that artists have and, yes. and stuff like that. And, and I was just going to ask you kind of briefly, what is the process when you guys, okay, we've got to come, you know, we need to book this date. What is kind of the process you guys go through of booking a talent to come in and play? And, we look and a year to two years in advance. Wow. And being a nonprofit, small budget orchestra, we have to work within certain parameters of what we can afford because only a quarter of our income comes from ticket sales. It's actually less than that. The rest come from donations, underwriters, things of that nature. So we have to work within this range of dollars that we think we can raise to bring in an artist. And so we'll um, look at management companies that, that have artists on their roster that have orchestra charts because you can't just pick some artists if they don't have orchestra charts. Uh, so I couldn't just throw out like Kid Rock. You right. Know, I'm if a he Kid Rock guy, don't laugh at if me. If he doesn't like have Kid charts, Rock. right, then okay. then he can't be paired with orchestra. And there's some phenomenal artists who have orchestra charts but are still $150,000. Oh, Lord. And so there's no way we could swing. We would. There's no way we could swing that. And so when we look at artists, we look at what might appeal to our demographic or, or even outside of um, our city. And to bring in, you know, tourist dollars to Victoria and and what if they have orchestra charts, whether it'll be a good mesh, because we only really do one what we call pops concert a year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's to broaden our audience to to bring an artist to Victoria to expand exposure for Victoria, but also bring people into the concert hall who may not choose otherwise to attend. They're attending for Jose Feliciano. Right. But when once they hear the orchestra backing them up, it's such an incredible musical experience to have all of that music washing over you because it's live and it's this rich beautiful sound of an orchestra. What is an orchestra chart? I know that's a dumb question, but when you, you say they, they don't have an orchestra chart or they do have, is that what you said for the? Right, if you, um, Kid Rock has music, right. and if he, he'll get a guitar player and a piano player to back him up and that's it. Okay. Well, you can't give the piano and drum part to the strings. Okay. And so what okay. they do is they, what they call orchestrating it is they, they write it so that it can fill the entire ensemble. Got and so it makes it, it much richer. Yes. Yes. And you might give the, the melody to the clarinets or the viola track or whatever. It now. Okay. Okay, yes. that makes sense now. So that, that artist would have to have that 
pre-existing for you guys to even look at them. And I guess right. you all have a, a website that you can go to or something that has all that. Yes, there's lots of managers out there um, that are that are hawking their artists, and I get material every day, every week on artists that are out there available. So if I if I could talk Kid Rock into an orchestra, then we might have right. a chance. Is what right, you're telling me? absolutely. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Well, what can the you know I, I didn't realize that only a quarter of you all's profit or you know funds came from ticket sales. That's that's shocking. Like that's that means that people donate really well and, and take care and of you guys. And we have two big fundraisers that also help. But we have an annual campaign where people can contribute to the fund drive. Uh, we have two fundraisers, Duck Safari, and we have Wine Dinner coming up in February. And we've been doing Wine Dinner for over 20 years. It's a very successful event for us. The Duck Safari is in its second year. Mm -hmm. I remember we had Mozart here. Um, so those are two also sources of income for us. But the rest is donated underwriting. That's really, that's Individual really kind of incredible that, that so much of that comes from donations and stuff. And that, that can be supported in a town this size. There yeah. are many towns this size that have such a rich cultural scene like Victoria has. And if you've never really gone and sat in a full orchestra, or full like you're right, it, it's, it's very immersive. It, it washes over you and you're just, it fills all the spaces and it, it's, you know, if you would have asked me at like 17, 50, you know, 20, 25, hey, do you want to go to the org? Nope, I'm cool, you know, yeah. but... God, I was stupid. I should have gone. Like it, yes. it's I. It was because I sucked at band. Just to be honest with you, like <laughs> I faked my way through band, and so I was always kind of intimidated. And ah, I don't need to go over there. And but as I've gotten older, I realized, you know, wow, that's that's pretty cool. And and there's a lot of talent there and stuff. And so, what am I forgetting? How can people support you if they um, if they want to make sure that you guys feel their support? If they want to help, make sure you can in get the next guest and talent. What can they do to support you and how do they find you guys and all that good stuff? Well, we're at victoriasymphony.com and on, you know, all the major social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. So they could buy tickets. They could um, just promote us socially. You know, the whole algorithms and social media, the more likes you get, the more shares you get, the more people will see you. Yes, ma'am. And so that is one really simple way to support any organization that you feel passionate about or want to see successful is just to help share share their posts like share, comment, like, share exactly because like, comment share it really this, too. this too yes yeah. <laughs> it really does i don't you know i don't know the science behind those algorithms right. but it really helps see more people yes ma'am yes ma'am no and and thanks for what all you guys do you know i know it's not easy when you have big talent like like jose coming and then all of a sudden boom and he's not and so Ooh, yeah, yeah you that's... know we're able to pivot uh we were lucky that they had a date so soon that could work out and you know in the current times we live, you have to be, be flexible. That's the name of the game now. Is. Yep, flexibility. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for still coming, even though the bottom dropped out on you guys. Well, I'm very grateful. You guys do a great j job. Um, anything I'm forgetting before I go to the commercial break? Well, uh, between now and our next event with Jose Feliciano, we actually have a concert in February. Uh, we are bringing... Ah, yes. uh, no, wait, wait. Am I getting it wrong here? Nope, right here. Yep. Oh, okay. Tell us about it. It's uh, it's called Classical Blockbusters Meet the East. So we're playing a large uh, orchestrated piece called Stravinsky's Firebird Suite, which is a beautiful, wonderful piece. But we're also bringing in this Pippa player from Houston. So it's kind of like a Chinese a what Pippa. It's a Chinese like mandolin. Okay. And so uh, <laughs> you're cool a very me. exotic type of evening. Um, and we Pippa. are we've already had schools make reservations in blocks to bring their students. And so we're really excited about that concert. And that's February 26th. Outstanding. Well, we will probably have you come back on and talk I'll about that to. then. And, and uh, maybe we could bring the Pippa player in. I like it because I don't have any clue what a Pippa is, and I would really like to see that. I'll so try maybe to work we that should. Out. Add that. Yes, she's I'll, only in Houston, so it's just a short drive. Yeah, drive. if we work that out, I, I think our audience would like to see a Pippa player because yeah. I sure would. So. Uh, um, thank you so much for all you do, ma'am, and for coming on. Guys, we will take a quick break and be right back. some new guests on the show we are excited to have them um ladies let's just jump right into this if you wouldn't mind young lady please introduce yourself and then we'll go down the line i'm elma salinas i'm from gulf bend and 
And I am Ashley Trevino, and I'm also with Gulf Bend. Outstanding. Well, for those of us that don't know or might be a little bit ignorant to it, talk to us about Gulf Bend. What is the Gulf Bend Center? What's your mission? What do you do? All that good stuff. Well, we, we work in what we call the IDD department, okay. which is working with uh, intellectually uh, disabled folks. Okay. Uh, we see people of all ages, um, you know, from one to 85. Uh, so uh, we cover all that section. The, of course, the other section, I'm sure everybody has heard the MH side or the mental health side of Gulf Bend where we have our psychiatrists and, and the nurses and all that, that that work with those individuals. But we're on the IDD side and we're here today because uh, there's a lot of things that have unfortunately been shut down uh, because of uh, lack of money from the state. Uh, so we've had to shut down a lot of things that Gulf Bend used to have for our guys. So um, Ashley and I uh, thought it'd be a good idea to start a program and uh, our supervisor uh, I'd like the name KIPP, which is Knowledge is Power program. Mm -hmm. So uh, it includes uh, two, two sections. One is, uh, in, it's once a month and people come in and we split them up where the parents have a class of their own and the kiddos or their, into, or their family members have a class of their own. So, uh, you know, they can be a, around other, guy, other kiddos or people uh, with the uh, same disabilities and then the parents can discuss and, you know, because a lot of parents go through a lot of issues with uh, autism and the IDD, a lot of behaviors, um, d don't know where to go, what to do. It's a big learning curve, mm -hmm. you know, it with is. autism and stuff is. and probably I would guess even in the, the initial identifying of it and figuring out what's going on there and then once you realize that it is autism, right. how to deal with it. And, exactly. yeah. and, you know, I know if I got that right now, somebody told me I, I wouldn't know where to go, I wouldn't know what to do, that mm -hmm. would come as a total shock to me and I would exactly. need some help and resources. Yeah, yeah and right. we definitely wanted this program to um, bring in a bunch of different resources as well. So resources that are here in Victoria, but also kind of on the outskirts of Victoria. So we do have some resources that are from Rosenberg, um, but we really wanted to bring in different resources to help the families know what is available to them here in Victoria, um, what they can use and what can be utilized, but also give them that um, sense of community too, to where they can really get together with other people who have children or have adults who also have um, intellectual developmental disabilities or autism um, to just have that safe space. But we also wanted to be able to provide to our customers too. So. Um, not just the family members, but also the customers. So we'll be doing like life skill uh, activities um, while the parents are learning about the different resources. So um, like this next, um, the one that we're having on Thursday this week is uh, one sound, one heart music therapy mm -hmm. coming in. And um, we're gonna do a craft to make our own like maracas and different kinds of tools, like music instruments. Um, with the customers while the parents learn a little bit about what one sound, one heart music therapy does. That's really neat and, and it, it, you know, I like how music is brought in and, and you know, these instead of just, you know, sticking on with something like not fun or just <laughs> go sit in this corner or right. hey, let's do some music therapy. Let's do, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like that and, and I'll admit, I, I'm very ignorant to, to autism. There's a lot about it that I don't understand. There's, mm -hmm. you know, I really next to nothing to be honest with you and but I have noticed that it seems to be an uptick in, in not just our community but it you know the through autism awareness and stuff like that and, and I, I know some people that, that have kids with autism and, and and they're really being good advocates out there as you know trying to help the public and, and educate the public and, and make us aware what on that note as the public for somebody like me that, you know, I don't know much about it, but I have friends that have kids with autism and, and they, how do we go about supporting a group like yours or the autism community or just the, the mental health community as a whole? You know, what's, what's the best way for the community to get behind you guys? And, or is it more of a, hey, let us get behind you as a community and back you? You know, where, where do we come into this where we can help you? Just the support, just showing up to our, our classes and being part of them. Uh, we've already had a couple of them, and unfortunately, we have not had a, a turnout. turnout yeah. mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, 
that's the biggest thing is just the support that we can keep going because the more we keep going, the more GoFin is able to, you know, provide support to these us. families. Yes. Yeah, and it's also really important that not just families and caretakers come, but it's also for teachers. It's also for um, maybe special education teachers, just anybody in the community who wants to learn more about um, autism and the intellectual developmental disability community. We really want to make sure that we're able to find that support because a lot of the times these families don't have that support um, that other families might have because there are very limited resources like we were talking about and so just knowing that um, even though you might not have a child with autism or a child with intellectual intellectual developmental disabilities um, you're still there supporting that community you're still coming to these events to learn about these things so that if you do happen to f come across somebody that needs that information you have that information mm -hmm. for them um, so just that support is definitely showing that you you're making that effort to come in and really support those families. No, that makes total sense. One more time, I want to loop back around to this, not to the KIPP program. I like that yeah. too. Knowledge is Power program. Um, it's every third Thursday of the month yes. at the Gulf Bend Center from 5.30 to 6.30. One more time, let's just talk about that class one more time. So who is this class for? Who are you marketing? You know, who's, who are you asking to come to this? And, and let's just go through it one more time. So the class is for... It's broken into two classes. So the first class is for those parent, parents, those caretakers, maybe those teachers that just need a little bit more information for those resources that are here. And those okay. resources will just be coming in every th um, third Thursday of the month to just talk about what they do with an activity for those caregivers and those parents. And then the second portion is for the customers. So the parents is kids or adults. Um, and we're gonna be providing an activity for them. So whether it's life skills and we're talking about feelings and expressing your feelings or making um, fun music instruments. Outstanding. Outstanding. Can you give me musical ability if, if I made one of those musical <laughs> instruments? Can you give me talent to go along with that? Absolutely not. Okay, well, at least you're honest. With God bless you. I, uh, two left feet and no rhythm, so I need all the help. I, I saw an opening. I was going to take it if you could help me there. I'm not very uh, music. <laughs> Musically inclined? Yeah, I don't. Neither I'm not am very good. I. Yeah, I, <laughs> music. My son, Are you? <laughs> No, no, really. no, no that, that's good. So all three of us up here with no rhythm and stuff. I bet y'all are better than me, though. So we'll just leave that one alone. Anything I'm forgetting, ladies, that we need to talk about before we let you go? Besides my, my bad musical ability? <laughs> Nothing? No, just that, you know, we really need support. Yes, ma'am. So we can keep on going. Yes, ma'am. Well, we, we will hope that they show up. That, hey, we'll do the whole like, share, and, and uh, what did we say? Like, share, and comment thing. Let's do that again. And, and guys, make sure you get out there and support them. You know, mental, mental issues and, 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 and all these different programs and stuff, the stigma doesn't need to be attached to this. You know, if you need help, get it. If you know others that need help, get it. Um, if you can help somebody, if you can contribute to the resources of this community by lifting people up and removing stigmas, do it. This is a good thing. Gulf Bend Center, we appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. Was it too Thank bad? You. Nope. Thank nope. you. Had fun? All right, good, good. Guys, awesome. we will take a break from our final sponsor and be right back. Since 1932, Wallach & Volk has been closing mortgages and doing it the right way. And the reason why the Volks opened up a bank um, at the height of the Great Depression was because the bank needed to be opened at the height of the Great Depression. And it was good for the community at that time. A lot of the banks were going under. In order to keep that community sound and stable, it was something that they did. I think that that says something about who Wallach & Volk was 85 years ago. And the only way you get to continue to do it is if you consistently do it great. And we plan on doing this for another 85 years. that all up but we were back with our last guest she uh, it's her fault she threw me off right before we started and so now that you messed me up when we started go ahead and introduce yourself Miss Claire <laughs> I'm just kidding that was my fault <laughs> hi I'm Claire Santiana and I'm the owner of Crossroads Art House I don't normally give her a hard time she comes on before so if you're just watching this for the first time I don't abuse my guests and I'm not mean to them I was just giving her a hard time but no Miss Claire talk to me we got another art walk here these are a big deal these, everybody I talk to that goes to these things just loves them. And mm -hmm. they're really excited that there's another one that was postponed and now yes, we're doing it. And so exactly. let's talk mm -hmm. all about it. So the one from December 18th was moved to January 22nd. Um, that's this Saturday. This Saturday, yes, ma'am. Yes, and we're very excited. It's from 1 to 6. 1 to 6. So 
for those that haven't seen the show before, they just moved to Victoria, they've lived under a rock the last five years, what is an art walk? So basically, there's going to be a trolley. Trolley. To yeah. Let, lead with the trolley always. Good call. It's, it's really fun. Um, but the trolley is going to have a route, and it'll take you around downtown so that you can look at all the artist artwork. And these, they're, they're set up in different businesses. Or they're not like out on the street. They're inside the business. Or some are, right? This How's time, it we are going to uh, close off right in front of Santa Rita Market and Moonshine. Okay. Um, and there are going to be some vendors, including Stirs. The right. drink place. All right, all right. I'm really yeah. excited about that. <laughs> um, and there's other vendors out there too. So there's a few outside. Um, a lot, most most of the artists are going to be inside. So um, there's Pacta and Vols, Vela Farms, Fasadis. Um, trying to remember off the top of my head. No, it's all right. there's a lot of them. It, yeah. But the point is, is, is a, a lot of the downtown businesses are working with the artists mm -hmm. to have this to where. You can take on multiple things at once. You can walk through here, you can see the downtown businesses, but mm -hmm. also be surrounded by the art and support the artist. And, yes. and, and so, yeah, and you are the curator of this. And yes. that is an I feel like you've just earned that title, like that's something <laughs> official, well done. Um, I don't have the first clue what a curator is, but it, it sounds awesome, and I'm sure well, you've totally you. earned that. Um, this will be the third art walk? Yes. Third, yeah. And each one has been a little bit better than the other one, and the first one was great. So that's a that's a good problem or a good yeah. thing to have. And the last one, we had over 1,500 people out, but it didn't feel like it because it's really spread out. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel like it's a really COVID-friendly event because not everybody's in one place, and you're able to spread out. And the business owners um, do a really great job hosting, and they have food for the guests and... Um, sometimes drinks available so well what if somebody wanted to combine it like they want to get their steps in or whatever you know so you don't have to take the trolley you could come and walk the whole thing oh, yeah. get your steps in walk mm -hmm. look at everything burn off the calories of the drink that you're having yeah. as you go. do are you allowed to have drinks on the street here if we uh, like I, I didn't know if we were going know. out if they you, you're supposed to know everything I don't and people know. are watching Claire you're supposed to have this answer <laughs> no I don't know either that's a that seems like people would like that walking down the street I feel like I feel like there's rules I don't really know I feel like there's rules too are there probably yeah. should be rules because yeah. <laughs> if there's not we could just go have a party right now and get this going but no I, I feel like there are too that's why I asked I was yeah. like because I know some cities do some Weird thing. Where or maybe you have to have a permit and, or something. Yeah. Like well, the, you know, I'll give you a permit. <laughs> I'll permit you to do this, and, and let's let's get this party started. Um, what am I forgetting? How does you? What do you guys need to support this? Anything that you need besides people showing up or anything like that? Um, we are open to sponsors. So if any businesses want to sponsor, they can contact um, Crossroads Art House, and we can talk about it. Um, another thing is we do still need a couple. We probably by tomorrow we'll need to know if anyone wants to donate anything for the map. So it's a good advertising opportunity for businesses because they could give a product away and then everybody who has the map, which people look at to go look at all the art, mm -hmm. will see that on the map. So right now we have a $60 gift basket from the Box Coffee. Um, and I believe mm, I, that's the only solid thing right now. So and what if I wanted to give away like a, a, a box set of Meet Victoria to I need a box set of Meet Victoria so I could give that away. Yeah. But if I did, I yeah. could theoretically, could. I could get that and I could give my show away down and there. And then everybody will see Meet Victoria on the map and they'll know that that's a prize they can win. And I'm trying to branch out and get some people from other areas of town too so that um, we get new crowds out that are excited about the prizes. Um, but I have some prizes. I, that's why I was like, that's the only thing solid because I have some people that said, Probably like the ninety percent <laughs> yes, but I want to make sure it's one hundred percent before I like announce it to everybody. You're but. probably smart for that. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's probably a good call. I uh, yeah, if, you, if it's not one hundred percent, then you better be careful. But, but some good stuff. I mean, I really think it's no. Good that sounds exciting. And, and down the road, I might look into. I that just sounds clever and put something on the map and fun yeah. and give it away and, and all that. And so I might get with you on that next go round. The biggest thing though really is people coming because if the community shows that it's something they like, then we can keep putting our efforts towards. It. So, we really just do need the community support and just come, just see the see a couple artists. You don't have to see all the artists. You can just see a couple, or you can see them all because they're all great. I think we have over sixty artists this time. Wow! And and yeah. that number continuously grows, does it not? Um, not for this one anymore. You know, they... <laughs> <sighs> but yes, every art walk we get more and more and more. But I did. I'm gonna take my foot out of my mouth to end the show, and you know, 
<laughs> now, hey, but that's, you know what, that's what makes this show different is I yeah. screw it up all the time and I have the guest on to come save You're me. Fine. And, You're and so, and, uh, well, thank you so much. Anything I'm forgetting, anything, I, I know this was probably our most laxed interview ever, but um, <laughs> it's just because I'm so comfortable with you. So, what am I forgetting, anything? I don't think so. I no? think that's well, it. thank you for coming on. Yeah. I know there's a, like a million and one events coming up in the future, so we will see more of you. Um, if they want to contact you um, to find out about this and just plug your, I know we're here to talk about Main Street and all that, but I also want you to plug real quick uh, Crossroads Art House, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, they can email me, crossroadsarthouse at gmail.com. Um, they can go on the, the Facebook page of the Downtown Victoria Art Walk has its own Facebook page. Got it. Um, Main Street Program's amazing. They're they're one of the sponsors of the, or they actually put on the event. Yes, ma'am. Uh, with me. So they, you can reach out to them. They can answer questions in uh, Victoria Art League. So Sounds good. Well, good thank you so much. I, I appreciate you always coming on and, and having a good time with me here and let me act like a, a fool sometimes. So thank you so much. And I want to very quickly congratulate um, um, Victory Made Media on joining forces with Thrive Fuel Digital Marketing. They are an outstanding company. Both of them are. And to see that merger there, new things are coming for the show. We'll have hopefully a whole new expanded reach and, and footprint where we can get out and cover more events, more stuff in the community, and just have more of a presence here to lift up others and what they're doing. And I would just one more time end with take care of each other, guys. And keep this momentum going that we have in the community of taking care of each other and lifting each other up. I like where we're going on taking care of each other. So let's just keep it going and support this event, support each other, be there for each other. And anything else? Well, Until next good. week, guys, appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you. Thanks so much for tuning in to Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. Make sure you comment down below, like the post, share the post. It really helps the algorithms. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow our page. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. And if you have an event coming on you want featured on Victoria Events, shoot us a message. We'd love to help you get the word out there. Lastly, make sure you support our sponsors. We could not do this show without them, so we're very grateful. Thanks so much, Victoria, and we'll see you at the next one.